Good evening, this is Pine Leaf Needles, and welcome to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and here at Lotro Players. Tonight we have Ann Dang. Hey, everybody. Rax Wolf. Hello, everybody. Ethel Rose. Hello. Draculetta. Greetings, everyone. And the ever mysterious Mystery. Hey there. She returns! Da, 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 da. Yes, I'm oh, not wonderful sick. sound effects. <laughs> I'm the sound effects master. Oh, I wanted a drum roll. Come on, oh. Pine Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. And this week, we will begin with the biggest news of all, the executive producer letter for 2000 for the close of 2013 and I guess an ex an introduction or teaser into what's in 2014 and it's a little bit more of a teaser than we usually have because the news is there is not going to be an expansion in 2014 they're taking a break from those so they could have several smaller content updates instead Yeah, it's uh, some. It's surprising to me. It's not surprising to some people, but um, for them to say it, especially this early on, was surprising. That being said, um, Helm's Deep was not necessarily in the best place at launch as compared to some previous expansions, so it's not too surprising. But uh, one thing that I don't necessarily think is completely true, um, and it's more just a positive spin on it, is that they say that they're listening to you know, player feedback is the reason that uh, this is going to happen. I honestly think it's from story necessity the reason why there's not going to be an expansion next year because you can't have another Isengard Rohan expansion. I, I just don't we're think that ready. you can do that. We're and not really close enough to Gondor yet to have one of those. Exactly, yes. we're not close enough to Gondor to have one of those either. And so I think this is really a story necessity decision and we'll still see... Um, maybe not quite as much content, but there's still going to be a lot of content next year because uh, the letter mentions the fact that we're going to Fangorn and the Flooding of Isengard. We're going to the Paths of the Dead. We're going to the Dead Marshes and Gondor. That sounds like a lot of content. That's uh, you know four new areas that they're adding on to, even if Fangorn, Isengard might not be very big and Paths of the Dead might not be very big. But still, that's the same four zone kind of strategy that they've had going the whole time. So I don't see much of a change in policy, really. All right. We will see what we get. The, anyone anyone else have any opinions? Oh, yeah. We got, we got opinions here. Um, <laughs> oh, you got opinions. <laughs> yes. Now, there were some opinions that were expressed in a... Well, let's say that ending had a little coup and... Held a secret meeting about some of the members <laughs> for a special <laughs> episode without informing others. <laughs> Finally, if I informed you, you just weren't on Skype. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wasn't on Skype at the time because I was at work. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you put your job for being so you employed. Can talk about big news points at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. All right, what was. Were you about to say something, Brax? Yeah, and it's it's a point that I made before on, on a special secret meeting and also uh, in some various forums that I posted in, but something I've noticed working in, in technology, in especially um, the last three or four years, is that we've, as an industry, moved away from doing large drops of content and updates in over long periods of time and we've moved to kind of a world where people are expecting more frequent updates not necessarily 20 30 features thrown at them at the same time but maybe one or two tweaks here and there maybe four or five new features uh, a month or every couple weeks and so this is really kind of falling into what the industry is is setting the user expectations at so I, I think that there's a little bit more here to to this than what we've even talked about and this falls into also the this is something else we mentioned before was they they emphasized wanting to make VIP worth it again and um, when you when you pay for VIP and then you have to pay again for a big content drop on top of it 
you start to feel like, well, what am I really paying the VIP for, right? Um, so I think one of the things they're trying to do is make this more worthwhile for the for the folks to subscribe. Maybe even pull some people back to the subscription model. All right. Well, I do have a question for everyone that we can go around the table here. Um, if you guys, do you guys think that if this is a very successful thing, they get a lot of uh, sales and um, let's say they get the same amount of money doing it this way that they would doing an expansion, do you think we will see this as a trend of not doing an expansion or do you think we will they will go back to the expansion model? And let's start with uh, Draculetta. I think if they make enough money doing it this way, this is how it's going to be from here on out. Okay. Athalos? I think if oh, they will make an expansion where it seems to fit best, like, say, uh, Minas Tirith, like, something like that, I think that is too big to be uh, put in the game without an expansion. Or Penal Fields and stuff like that. It, it depends on what kind of content they're trying to put out, and if it's you know, big, then they probably would just make it a whole expansion. Okay, mystery? I hate to say it, but I tend to agree with Ethelros. I don't think it's the end of expansions. I think, though, they'll be more picky about where they put them in. Okay, Pineleaf? I, was, I would have to agree with that also, is that Minas Tirith is going to have to have an expansion. I can't think of off the top of my head anything else that's going to absolutely demand it, but Minas Tirith definitely does. Yeah, I definitely think that... Um, I, th I don't know about definitely, but I do think that they're going to still have expansions moving forward. I'd be surprised if they don't. Um, but I don't know if they're going to feel as tied to it, assuming that it is a successful model to take a break and do this. Um, and then secondly, assuming that they are going to s actually spend more time on existing systems and instead of, let's say that there is actually less content and it's going to be more on existing systems, is that a good thing? What do you guys think? Just for 2014, you're saying? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that... Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that they're going back. Now... There, there's, there's an awful lot of skepticism out there, I think, and we'll, we'll get to this when we talk to my, about my pick of the week later, but it's, it's going to be... I don't know that the reasons they gave in the producer's letter are really the entire story, um, and there's going to be a lot of people out there that are saying, hey, they're, they're taking a break from expansions because they can't afford to do expansions anymore or because the game is no longer a priority for Turbine or the WB. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. All right, anybody have anything else to add? I was just going to say, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think um, in some ways it'll be good. It just depends, though, too, on how much they are going to charge players for it as well and how big the um, content will be for the price. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know if you heard this, Miss, but they did say that um, the content will be free for VIPs. So. Yeah, but then, yeah, it's if you're not a VIP, it's um, going to be... Right hitting you in the wallet, so to speak. Well, so whether or not it's successful will depend on price as well. And I think, um, uh, I, yeah. think actually, I think uh, Fredless makes a good point in their chat saying that in all these might not, not necessarily be full landscape quest regions. They could just be like a couple of instances, say for the Pass of the Dead or something like that. Yes. We don't know what kind mm. of size and uh, amount it's going to be. Right, and I really hope that Paths of the Dead is not the zone. <laughs> or at the very least, it is the smallest zone Lotro's had. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I just really... All these ghosts giving us quests. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like that one. I reckon if they do Paths of the Dead really well, that'll be where I want to spend a lot of my time. Because you're going to die a lot? 
oh, look, that's just, you know, you know I'm going to die. So <laughs> I may as well be with all the ghosts. <laughs> I, I hope they use the opportunity to um, make Paths of the Dead a level 95 in-game instance cluster. I think that would be, that would go a long way towards um, appeasing some of the uproar out there from the hardcore raiders that don't care for the big battle system. Yeah, I, I really hope um, with this style of content, because so far, basically the way that the epic story's gone, we've seen the epic story always moving on to another zone. I hope that with this, we will actually possibly return to the old quest style of um, Volume 1, where we actually were able to go back into these regions that we've already been before and do more uh, epic story quests there, because I really miss that. I really miss as as these, as you know, almost theme park style um, epic story quests. As long as the traveling isn't as obnoxious, I'm fine with it. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, I don't... I think that that's kind of the reason why they've gone away from it. But I think, going, say, going back to Dunland and seeing what's happened since we left would be a really cool thing to do. And it sounds like they're doing that with Isengard because of the way that they're going to have the fall of Isengard. But I, I wish that they'd do that more where we can see what we, what's actually changed and how we actually affected these places over the long term. <laughs> I don't think I want to see how I affected that place. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. I, let's go to the patch notes then. We're not going to bring up the super secret surprise they hinted at? Oh, Which everyone you, knows what they oh, were hinting you want to know about the... Okay, Logan, Wait, let's you talk said, about Finally, if you surprise. said you want to know about... Do you, does that mean that you know about the super secret surprise and what it is? <laughs> No, I don't know what the super <laughs> secret surprise is. We know what they want us to think it is, though. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, um, and for those of you that don't know, they did mention in the producer's letter that uh, they hinted at the possibility of either a new race and class or a new class or some type of new... Uh, no. addition in that regard. All they said was that the class changes made it possible. Yeah, that, that's a good clarification. Yep. And, you know, read that how you will, but I think that uh, they definitely want us to think that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how it is with Turbine. Oh, what yeah. you think they say is not necessarily what they really did say. They're trickier than an Aes Sedai. Putting it. What race? What race would they put in? Class. You said a new, ra yeah, but Andang said a new race. Well, and that was more reading the contains. Class. That was more the reading the contains moderate peril article. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. but the contains in moderate peril article contained moderate peril. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now becoming evident finally. <laughs> Although we could play as eagles and just fly down and swoop on people, that'd be fun. We, we can't now I know why you like Paths of the Dead being a whole zone. <laughs> 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 yes. Wishes to grab the ring and drop it into Mount Doom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right. All right. If they did create a new class, what class would you think they would make? A warden with a different name, so finally found an excuse to create eight more. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the uh, thing. It's that if you look now, we have three light armor classes that use will, three medium that use agility, and three heavy that use might. Uh, I can't really see another one fitting in unless they add three. Yeah, and it three would kind of classes. imbalance it again. I mean, it's already three square. <laughs> Yeah, so the question becomes, if, if it is a class, then what did the class revamps do to clear the way for it? And that's what I'm wondering, because unless they made it to where, you know, the classes are all more... I don't even know how <laughs> what they could have done to warrant a class now that wasn't available before, and that's what really 
makes me curious. What I think that is is with the addition of the the trait trees. You know, if you want to spend the points and grab something out of out of another tree, you can kind of quote unquote dual class your class if that makes sense. Ooh, that is interesting, and it will maybe and it will cost quite a number of trade points. Cor to do yes, that. correct. So you could have, you know, just for example, you could have say a hunter that uh, could do real really good uh, sword skills more than what they n normally can. <laughs> or you you could be you know like a, a kind of like a battle mage, not. You know, they wouldn't call it that, of course, because, you know, it wouldn't be lore, but have, have, have like, a lore master that is, like, uber with a sword and his skills. Is what, that's how I read into that, if that's that's what they're saying. I think they're opening up dual classing more. If you want to spend the points. Mm -hmm. It'll definitely be interesting to see what they have in mind, and even more interesting, or possibly less, to see if they actually make it happen this year. Ah, yes, that is always the tricky part with Turbine. It wouldn't be the first time a producer letter has said still do something and later had, you know, been not able to, like well, the new PvP area <clears throat> twice. Yeah, that, among other things. I have always noted that in any place that what the marketing department decides they they want to do is not necessarily fit within the realm of possibility. I'm a software engineer. I've run into this. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. With that done, now we can head into the patch notes because there was an update on Monday, 12.1, where there were essentially bug fixes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Some players are saying that there were more things broken than there were fixed. <laughs> but um, I don't the know. The only, only thing I notice is that animations for pretty much every class seem to be a bit messed. Like, even my uh, creeps do it, where they're like the weapons, they don't put them away properly. Well, yes. well I find that they're putting away on oh, my warden, they seem seems to be putting the weapons away more neatly than any time in the past because in the past they were put really? away so fast I've never had any problem. but now it looks like fight's over, pause a second and neatly puts away the weapons which is, I thought, a major improvement My experience with it has been fight's over five to ten minutes later my weapons go away No, mine only takes a, takes a second or two, but before it was done immediately in a way that was completely unrealistic. Right, and that would make more sense, but from what I've seen on my character, and it does work the way that you describe sometimes, but sometimes, and I'd say possibly even more of the time, um, the weapons are out for a lot longer than they should be, and it makes me feel like I'm in combat. And <laughs> I wonder what I pulled, and it's nothing because it's just the animation that still has the weapons out. It's really maybe, weird. Yeah, maybe it's based on the class. It seems to be work very well in the ward. And maybe I think my hunter though seems to have weapons out a little bit longer. So maybe it depends on class. Well, there's a couple of skills my lawmaster has where he puts away his weapons and then like looks into his pouch or to like burning embers for example and in those the he still has holding the sword and staff so it looks weird that kind of <laughs> bugs and quite a few of those skills alright it needs a little work then <laughs> but other than that I haven't noticed any other issue. particularly in mountain combat uh, that's where I really notice that the weapons stay out a long time <laughs> Oh, that's been there for a while, well, I think, actually. Yeah, but let's face it. In mounted combat, you're not you're unlikely to be sheathing weapons as often, I would think. That may be true, but it's just a really weird... Because, you know, that's the indicator of whether you're in combat or not for almost for most players, and it's really weird. Uh, oh, you don't look at the little circle thing that... As interesting as that circle is, finally, if I don't spend my days looking at it, no. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject, I actually would like a sheath and um, you know unsheath option yes. for because I know um, I, Star Wars: The Old Republic has that, and I quite like it. Well, and with this bug, I was very much thinking of Skyrim. <laughs> I was like, 
I honestly, because the bug lasted so long at one time, I honestly thought that I accidentally was hitting a button to sheath and unsheath my weapons like out of Skyrim. I thought that they added that in without telling anybody, but uh, it was just a terrible glitch. Yeah, I'd love to be able to use my staff as a staff and not you know, strapped to my back. <laughs> you don't want much, do you? Uh, <laughs> Very I guess easy to satisfy. Well, anyway, there may be a couple of questions concerning the animation and whether it's intended or not, but despite that, the community must be really great because 10 Ton Hammer has presented an award to Turbine for Lotro for the best community of 2013. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's that's pretty cool. Um, considering Lotro didn't really win any other awards in 2013, and it was the community that stepped up and got noticed. That's that's pretty special. Yeah, I think that this is um, in large part due to the fact of uh, Sapiens raising so much uh, money for uh, the children's hospital that he was raising money for. Yeah, um, extra life. Yeah, extra life. Well, that was just fantastic, and I think that that's. Yeah a large portion of it beyond the fact that, you know, Ultra is an awesome community. Well, I'm sure, though, that things like the Fellowship Walk also helped. Yes, indeed, Pine Leaf, our very own stuff for our personal PR and marketing of the... <laughs> 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 yes. Well, even, you know, aside from that, just the general in-game community is just great, and it pretty much yeah. always has been since I started playing, at least. Mm-hmm. Very well. We've gone well. over this many times before, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And other activities that are going on is that since it is getting into winter or starting winter now, depending on your oh, point of view... Look. Unless, yeah. of course, you're happening on the other side of the world. Okay, we'll call it the Yule Festival. <laughs> the Yule Festival is now active, which is the... Which is, of course, turned on around the time of Christmas tide, and it is the time where you go into winter home and have all sorts of fun, running into theaters, snow beasts, and things such as that. I don't know if any of you tried the festival yet this year. No, but I did do my update this morning, so I'll get in there this afternoon or tonight. Ah. Well, the festival will last until G January 14th. Anybody else? Has anyone here actually gone there yet? Okay. Yeah, yeah I have every day. So All right. I was beginning wondering if this, if Ebenezer Scrooge was running this show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't done that. I think I did one day of the festival just to see what it was like, and it's pretty much the same as last year. So I said, no, nah, not doing it. And that's it. Right. So even though it is pretty much the same, CSTM did do their annual festival guide for the Yule Festival, which features this picture of the ugliest festival horse I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we say that every year, though? <laughs> I think we say that with every horse they bring out. I don't know. I think that one spring horse can't be beaten, really. Okay, okay, you do have the... All right, if you wish. <laughs> yeah, that is rather... But this one is ye yellow with this big, huge blanket. It's rather weird. They always use the same actual horse skin for the these uh, festival mounts, I think, which is kind of annoying. I, I don't know, this one seems to be a... Sl more yellowish color than before and seems to have a hardier build than some of the earlier mounts. So I guess if it's a winter horse, I guess that makes sense. So what are the war, cos war horse cosmetics like this year for the Yule Festival? Well, they probably match that horse. They match that oh, okay. horse and it looks like a tablecloth again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to worry about that then. Well, that'll be fine for the skirmish soldier when he gets his picnic basket. He can just pull the blanket <laughs> off the horse. It's That's fine. Right. See, they're thinking. Dual purpose. All right. Guess the hungry hobbit's got to eat something. 
<laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> so let's go into the developer snippets for this week. So, Ethelros, anything yeah. in particular that you find it enlightening for this week's picks? Uh, not a whole lot this week. Obviously, um, <laughs> there isn't. There usually isn't much to be uh, talking about anyway. But the main thing this week is the. Uh, obviously, you remember last week, uh, Verisol was talking about posting the scaling instance loot, like all of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this week, he did go ahead and do that. Uh, he did mention later on in the thread that some of them will be changed. Uh, I think it's something to do with um, Guardian block and stuff like that. Certain things. You read through it and you'll see what he uh, says there. All right. Yeah, but That's there the were main pages one. and pages and pages of images of all of this loot that uh, he's uh, showing up. And it's just amazing how much he actually did uh, work wise to get all those images alone. Well, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, give credit where credit's due. That was uh, not because I think they've actually done that before. No, they. I don't think they have. Because in in the past, you would always have a user eventually compile a full list of them and post those. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it is well. There isn't a whole lot. There's a couple of class specific ones. Uh, they go. They're going to remove the resist chance from force taunts because uh, obviously you know they reduce their duration of them with the last patch to five seconds, I'm guessing. <laughs> if you right. have them uh, that week now, you want to make sure they actually work every time you use them. So that's something they'll be doing alongside uh, changing stuff with the Guardian Combat. I don't play one, so I can't uh, comment on that. There was another one with regards to Captain Banners. Uh, there was a, They were going to be changed with 12.1 as well, but apparently a bug turned up on the Bull Roar server and they had yeah. to pull it yeah, I think one of the problems is that people are wanting for ground targeting. The problem is that when you have ground targeting, I have, with my runekeeper, I have a situation where there's a one of the secondary rune stones. It, if you have it traded all the way, all the way up, it becomes ground targeted, and boy, it's annoying, and. I I sort of like wish right now that I'd only taking it two steps up instead of three steps up so I don't have to deal with that ground targeting thing. I could just click it and it pops up. So therefore they are one of the things they're gonna do is hide the captain's banners thing behind a trait so that you only have ground targeting if you want it. Yeah. And um I, maybe I don't play a runekeeper that much either, but is that the way it works for them too with their rune stones or is it you have it, <laughs> whether you want it or not. Well, it's well the way it works right now. That's what I was just talking about. Is that the now the healing rune stone is always goes where you go, but the lightning stun rune stone, that one is ground targeted if you have three tiers of the trait that gives you the stone. But if you have only one or two tiers, then it's not ground targeted. It appears next to you. It's, that's the way does the, the third tier works. does the third tier give you anything else, or is it just the uh, ground targeting? I think it's a little bit stronger. Also, I can't remember off the top of my head. Seems to be a bit of lack of consistency there. Then seems to be on a developer basis. Well, yes, there is always that little thing. Yes, and the hunter, right? You were you were you were, you were talking about the hunter having those things also. Yeah, it's part of the spe specialization as well. Hmm. Uh, other than that, there was uh, obviously a, a lot of things haven't been uh, ad properly adjusted with Helm's Deep, and PvP consumables are one of those, as well as creep regens. So that's something that's going to be adjusted with 12.2, whenever that is. And aside from that small thing, there was the uh, hardware update they said they were going to do a while back. Uh, you can just check on right. it and see. Uh, what it is, I don't understand the stuff. I'm not a tech person. Yeah. I, I don't understand why they do a... I understand why they do a minimal hardware, but I don't understand why they do a recommended hardware. I think that's something that most, or a lot of people seem to do. Uh, yeah. yeah, almost every uh, game that I've seen on the back of the box, there's recommended and 
minimum. Yeah, um, but it's kind of dumb. Okay, well, <laughs> don't complain to everyone <laughs> in the past. Uh, I'm just saying, it, you, you want to do minimum years. for sure to make sure that it runs, and anything better than minimum is going to be better by a factor of however much better it is. Well, right, I have a feeling that's the point where after you go beyond that point, it starts going to diminishing returns, I think, is... Yeah, minimum is like the your hard drive may or may not catch on fire stage. <laughs> right. Right. Recommended no, is your hard drive probably won't catch on fire unless you're doing something else at the same time. <laughs> Very well. That's how I see it if you want some logic to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into store news. The store sales, the free sample of the week are Universal Power Potions times 5, POW 97. And that probably means we've had this 97,000 times already. <laughs> <laughs> One per account if you really care about them. I wish they would stop giving us these that stuff that you can get in the Hobbit presents because it's kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah. It, the Hobbit presents have had a weird effect where they've almost trivialized the free sample of the week, I think, personally. Anyway. Well, yes, that's because you you get a free sample every day now exactly, for yeah. multiple for one character. Per server. And I mean, so I, I personally, trash these things anyway. I mean, <laughs> do do we still need a free sample if they're going to be things like this? If not with really. Hobbit presence. I mean, it it seems like a almost a waste of developer time at this point. I think. I mean, stuff like XP boosts and Slayer well, Deed it, accelerators and stuff like that. It's not developer time. Fun. It's it's quartermaster time actually. More likely. We also have 20% off the following items. Legacy tier upgrades, and I see that Drac is like me, that we don't play the LI game, so who cares? Not at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Less said, the better. Right. So then the selects, relics, and scrolls are also Again. on sale. Riyipi doo da. If I get enough relics from skirmishes, and yes, I know they're only tier fours or fives, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay turbine points for sevens and eights. <laughs> All right, then third one are writing traits. Now this one is can be potentially useful. It has the apprentice writing trait, the apprentice writing trait for account, and the journeyman writing trait for account. Those account wide ones are expensive, but they do allow you to ride faster if that's what you enjoy doing. I did get the uh, top version of this and I have to say I really am glad I did. It does. It is a noticeable difference and I would not want to go back to the previous way. So I recommend it if you're, you're planning on making more than one character, obviously. Yes. Now, I probably wouldn't have done it if I planned never to create another character again, but then some of my newer characters, like the lore master that I ran through the YouTube series was the first new character to benefit from them where he didn't have to do the quest to get the writing trait and all that stuff. And of course being able to start writing early rather than waiting until level 20. <laughs> and finally milestones and traveler skills are also on sale. So if you want to be a hurry traveler or miles, anybody here have any of these? It looks like Drac has bought some. I have extra milestones. I find they're handy. Yes. Though I guess I mainly play... Of course, with all the wardens I play, obviously, I don't care too much about extra milestones on a warden. <laughs> <laughs> well, even with my hunter, I found the extra milestones kind of came in handy. Extra what milestones? Like I could see the hurry traveler, maybe, but extra milestones? <laughs> we think it's like for a lore master, we have no port skills and no speed buffs. Hence why I have um, extra milestones. <laughs> yeah, well, we do have the extra ports to your house, and we, we know Mist is definitely has housing. <laughs> 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 Maybe not, but we'll find out today. <laughs> Pretty sure I paid my maintenance up till December. Yeah, I have a feeling. 
You might have, assuming that they weren't paid till March already. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That was going to be after I moved. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, then I guess you better get in and start paying if it's for the end of December. Right. I think so. Now, if you really do love spending turbine points, then you probably also love buying turbine points so that you can have them to spend. In which case, the bonus points will be tripled until December 29th. So a nice Christmas present if you enjoy buying turbine points. Yeah, I caved and bought one. Aha, yes. Which, what level uh, did you get? I think it was the second for 5,500. Right. I just think it was a Christmas gift to myself since, <laughs> you know. I mean, I did drop VIP this year, so I'm going to need time points to buy the content next year anyway. This pretty much sets me up for that year. Yeah, this yeah. will be a great thing for players wanting a long-term investment who are not VIP, because it, it is going to be... I don't want to say a lot of money, but it's going to be you know some amount that you'll need to have to pay, and so you want to make sure to have um, at least a little bit, I think, and might as well get it during the sale. So. Right. Now, of course, I never quite understood this base points and bonus points thing, but I guess it was so that they could have double and triple bonus point sales and stuff like that. Make it look like you're getting more. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds typical in the retail industry. It's like when uh, people selling stuff say it is is half price when the price they're selling at is the base. <laughs> well but then, you make you speaking think it's of half, half price. off, Helms D Premium Edition and Base Edition are now fifty percent off. What? Until December twenty ninth. That's crazy talk. Why would they do this? Christmas. Yes. This has <laughs> happened before. Maybe not 50% off, but 50%? during the holiday season, they have had expansions be on sale to some extent. A month after the expansion dropped, it went to 50%? Really? Well, keep in mind that Helm's Deep was later than most expansions this year, so I think that is probably why. But they usually do have a holiday sale of some type with the most recent expansion, so... That's and it's just the Lotro market, by the way, so you do have to pay money for it. It's not a. It is on also right. on Steam, actually. I just checked. Well, either way, you're paying money for it, not uh, right. to my yeah. points, which is the thing. Very well. All right. So either through the market or through Steam, then you could get 50% off on either of them, either base or premium. And that concludes the game news. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go into the site news, and we'll begin with a little article concerning the Bowmaster. Yes, the Bowmaster is a is the red line in the Hunter, and it was the red line, and it still is the red line. And I did a little write up on some of the some of the skills for the Bowmaster and how things have changed a little bit if you trade in that line. And what I found in, in kind of doing some experiments with the Bowmaster, because I didn't, I didn't plan to run in Bowmaster. Uh, I just pretty much did it for about three or four days to get a feel for it so that I could write the post. And uh, what I found was I felt a lot more like I was playing the Hunter prior to Helm's Deep than when I'm traded Huntsman or Trapper of Foes. Um, the cool thing about the way they've done the Hunter, I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned this before, is that with the three specific trait lines, they all feel very different now. Um, it used to be, I think, that you could trait part, uh, maybe mostly red and a few blue, or uh, half red and half blue, and it would still feel very similar. There'd be a little bit less damage if you traded more blue, but but quicker uh, inductions and, and quicker firing of your of your arrows. Um, but you still had to play it pretty much the same way. You, you didn't want to pull too many guys at one time. You wanted to stay still and you wanted to fire away and you wanted to kill things before they got to you. That's kind of the way the Bowmaster line is set up now. It's, it's, it's uh, designed for big damage, further range. You can actually fire, I think, 10 meters further than the other two trait lines in Hunter. And uh, they did some interesting things, like they made camouflage a more interesting skill now. Camouflage is the skill for the Hunter where you can go into stealth as long as you don't 
move, you can go into stealth and um, kind of e elude or evade some of the monsters that are walking around you. One of the things you can do with, with camouflage now is it, if you specialize to a certain level, it increases your critical chance if you fire from camouflage. So, you know, if you're getting ready to... The hunter actually does a lot of things to get ready to fire the guy. Uh, you focus up, you go into camouflage, and then you, you nail the guy with uh, one of your big hits. You have a better chance of, of critting if you fire out of camouflage, which before, it didn't really matter if you fired out of camouflage or not. That was just an extra little thing that they threw in there. Um, As if so, getting jumped by gold wasn't painful enough. Yeah, I... <laughs> I attached a little video uh, demonstrating some of the skills, and I, I fired off an upshot, which is the new capstone I love from upshot. camouflage. And, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And I actually did it. I got a 10K crit, and I was using a level 85 LI still. And so, and I wasn't really even used to playing Bowmaster, so I'm sure there's going to be hunters out there that are going to be able to do some min-maxing. They're going to they're gonna get a great LI, and they're going to, probably take down some of those landscape mobs in one shot. Yeah. All right. And after that, then, let's look into level 95 crafting outputs for the... Boy, Lawson really went through a lot of <laughs> <laughs> work here, it looks like, to get these things, because is this all the outputs for every single recipe for being... With with your guilds, which yeah, is he did a ton of work, and uh, I wanted to make sure to definitely feature this article this week because just looking through all the images, it's just amazing how <laughs> much it, it went through. And so, definitely a big hats off to him for doing that. Flossen's a major crafter. He's in my kin, and um, I know if I ever get a tweet from Flossen that says, hey, do you have this or that crafted item? If, if, if I ever say no, then I can expect to see it in my mailbox the next day. <laughs> to expect to see it in the next... What, not within the next 10 minutes? <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yes. Very well. So therefore, let's have... So if you're a member of a guild or are interested in what they do, then you can have a look at that. Now, this includes the... Crit the automatic crit versions of the regular recipes. So some of these things you can get by critting when you're doing the regular recipe when you're doing the regular things. So keep that in mind. But if you want to know what to look forward to as a guild, and of course I see that the cook has very little as usual. <laughs> So let's go on to Brax's pick of the week. So a couple days ago, there was a survey floating around. And let me, I guess, maybe preface this, because after I looked at this survey, it, it was purported to come from one of the player council members, and it was looking for feedback from Lord of the Rings Online players for the players council. Let me say that I cannot verify the source of this survey, uh, I don't know that it came from a player council member, but putting all that aside, the questions and the results that that you can see from the survey are in, are very very interesting. Um, it's a it was done in a a Google form, <clears throat> like a Google spreadsheet form, and if you take the survey and then get to the end of it, you can actually drill into the aggregate answers from everybody so the statistics and the and the bar charts are actually in there from what all, everybody has answered and these were questions that were it was a satisfaction survey so there was questions about how satisfied players are with Lotro um, right now I'm looking at the the response page I haven't re refreshed it in a while and it, there's 470 responses so there's quite a few responses it's a, it's a good large sample um, and the very first question is, how satisfied are you with the gaming experience of Lord of the Rings Online? And it's on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being the least satisfied. I'm sorry, 1 to 4, 4 being the least satisfied, and I think 5 being um, no opinion or something like that. 26% answer to 4, which is kind of interesting. Um, and if you go down, then it, then it breaks down and says... 
how satisfied are you with these different aspects of the game? And if, if you kind of skim down through that, you can see that most people are pretty satisfied with questing. Um, most people are not very satisfied with PVMP, pretty satisfied with crafting, not with housing, not with hobbies, not with instances, not with epic battles, pretty satisfied with area design, pretty satisfied with music system, not with legendary items, not with mounted combat. And if you, I think maybe what makes this even more interesting to me is if you look at the, the demographics of who answered, a very large majority of the folks who answered the survey had been playing the game for five years or longer. So these are a lot of long-term players that are answering these questions. And maybe the biggest, the biggest question that was the most interesting to me was which feature should be worked on as a priority. And this question was a radio button question, which means you could only select one answer out of this entire list of features. Out of a list of, looks like about 20 features, a huge majority answered that they need to focus on instances and raids. 42% answered that one specific feature out of almost 20 questions. So it's kind of a theory we ha we've had. We've, we've heard a lot of complaints ramping up to Helm's Deep. Um, but a theory we've had is a lot of these complaints are coming from people who have played the game for a long period of time. And it, it may or may not be that they don't like change, but now we see some specific reasons that they are complaining. And it's instances and raids, it's a little bit of housing, it's PVMP, um, and those are kind of the, the big ones. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention about this survey there was a free form question at the end where you could type in whatever you wanted and all of those answers are also aggregated in this link. It, I only read about halfway through them. <laughs> There's a ton of them. Um, but they're also very interesting because, you know, the people who were answering the surveys obviously didn't know that the person before them totally hated what Turbine did for something. So the next person might be like, yeah, this is a great game. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Uh, so there's a little bit of discrepancy in there, but it's interesting to see some of the freeform. Um, there's a lot of complaints about what you would expect, uh, the class revamps, the in-game content, and the epic battles were the ones that kind of jumped out at me. There's, there's also some complaints about the forums um, and the way that they're administered. So if you're interested in, in what some of the players are thinking, I think this is an, a really, it's a somewhat telling survey, and I will give also the... the um, maybe a disclaimer that there's nothing keeping somebody from filling this survey out multiple times because I went in and hit the link again and I can go through it again if I want. So there could be a little bit of ballot stuffing going on there, but out of 470 responses, I think you still got probably a pretty good sample. Very well. Thank you for bringing that one to our attention. Donations. This week we received a $10 or more donation from Victoria who wishes us to s tell us about our company. Epistle Publishing is an independent publishing company that specializes in epic adventure, fantasy, poetry, and science fiction. And you can go to their site via the link in the show notes or you could type in Epistle Publishing, I'm sure, in Google or your favorite search engine and find it that way. Yeah, it's epistlepublishing.com and... Um there's some nice books on here. I've uh, I haven't read them, but they have nice covers, and um, it definitely looks like more than just uh, an indie publisher. So I definitely recommend uh, checking them out and seeing uh, if there might be something you might want to buy there. There are some samples in there too. Yeah, so definitely go and check that out. It looks like a really high quality uh, publishing site. Very well. And if you wish to help Lotro players, simply go to the donations page where you can help support the podcast on Lotro players and also help support the site. We have $5 and $10 mentions where if you donate $5, you will get a mention on the podcast of your choice. Active podcast, of course, since you don't want to choose an inactive one. And $10 mentions will get you a mention on all of our current active podcasts. 
now we have some feedback. No reviews, unfortunately, but we do have a comment. Square Sulo left a comment on episode 25 of Belocho Players News. Pro tip. If you're not yet at level cap, use your destiny points to publish Rest XP, Accelerated Experience. At only 250 destiny points, it is an expensive, an inexpensive buff, and it persists after you revert to premium. Now, I have to admit that prior to the release of Helm's Deep, I actually did use this buff quite a bit, but after Helm's Deep and going from 85 to 95, I don't think I've used that at all. All, you know, maybe once at most because who? Because there's plenty of XP to be gained while leveling in in, in the Helm's Deep areas, and there's no danger of running out of quests. And you need to do as many quests as possible to get all the trait points. Yeah, and I think that's why it's a great thing that he points out that it's uh, if you're not level cap. So I think if you're a really low level player, then uh, well, you might not have destiny points if you're a really low level player since. Uh, is it still possible to earn destiny points? Yes, you. Yes, I get. Uh, I get. I think. I think something like two hundred per level once I hit level ten. Isn't okay. that just for VIP? Yeah, fun? if you're a VIP, yeah, you have to be a VIP in order to earn destiny points. Mm-hmm. And then once you go back to premium, you can't actually use them anymore. They just sit there. Yeah, that's the that's one of the perks of being a VIP. Is as one of the few perks of being a VIP. You can still use them. <laughs> I was premium and used the. Uh, yeah, the, that's what they changed them. Yeah, that's what no. the letter claims. But yeah, the letter actually claims that you can still use them after you revert. Yeah, well, I can't. Well, the last time I tried using mine, I couldn't. It doesn't allow I think allow what he means to. is that. Where after the ones you've already used, as in the blue bar, stays there after you've gone to yeah. premium. Not that oh, you okay. can keep yeah, buying yeah. it. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. The blue bar will still be there. Yeah, that's that's logical, of course. Yeah, but, of course, they... the blue bar disappears so fast when you're leveling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now, even, well, one of the reasons why it would have to stay because it's treated exactly like store VIP. Right. And st store bonus. All right, emails. This week, our first email is from Glenren. Hello, everyone. I was wondering what your thoughts are on gearing at Endgame. I am not a raider and will be mostly skirmishing solo duo and possibly big battles as my Endgame activities. Is crafted the way to go, or is the gear you get from skirmishing big battles what I should shoot for? Is there any route I should be thinking about? Thanks for the great show, Glenren Man Champion on Landreville. Well, the first thing to say is that Epic Battles loot is only jewelry, so therefore, anything else, you'll definitely not be wanting to get it from the, from, from the Epic Battles. Anyone here have any thoughts? Well, I think Pineley, if you're missing an opportunity to talk about skirmishes. <laughs> I was thinking about the same thing. <laughs> like he brings up skirmishes in the in the email there. You know, this is a great opportunity for you to talk about how amazing skirmishes are and why someone should <laughs> do thousands and thousands of them. Thousands and thousands of them. Oh, uh, who Minimum. Would hurt? Minimum. <laughs> Well, I know how much time it takes to do thousands of skirmishes. <laughs> Speaking of which, you're getting close to your 2,000th skirmish, aren't you, finally? My 2,000th... Well, it's my 2,000th at-level skirmish. When I say at-level, I mean at my level or higher on my main character, my Pineleaf Winfola. That's what I'm meaning by this. For example, if I've done any skirmishes I've done that were below my level don't count for that because they only get shown on statistics if you click an extra button, and I think that's well past 2,000 already. Are you, are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is the... But yes, I'm not a raider either. I've 
very rarely get into raids, and most of my skirm are either solo or small fellowship skirmishes are what I'm doing mostly as my in-game activities. Most my recommendation would be either create a new class, or if you really do want to stick with your same character, look at improving uh, deeds and stuff, unless you find that kind of boring. Um, in which case, I actually had a lot of fun going through, legitimately had a lot of fun going through skirmishes and leveling up my soldier and getting more and more powerful. That was a lot of fun. Yes, but he is mainly looking for what What about is the best gear to get. Actually, right. I, I believe that the... Crafted gear, I don't know if it's still true, but I know at one point the crit-rated crafted gear was the best stuff, and I rarely ever worried about getting it, because <laughs> it tended to be overkill for what I wanted to do. With this expansion, the uh, gear stats seem to be pretty uniform, so you can get a piece from an epic battle that has pretty much the same level of stats as one from, say, a random scaling instance. So it doesn't yeah. seem to be that important which ones you do. Yeah, in fact, most of the gear I have is the stuff that I got from questing in order to get to the end game, and that seems to be do be reasonably good for what I want. I don't know, of course, what the raid gear is like or anything like that, but that requires seals, and I don't have seals. Any other thoughts? I think right now you don't need real good gear. Yeah. Well, you got a point with that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's some people th uh, have fun gearing up. Which I don't yes. particularly understand, yes. but Some here you people, go. Well, you might want to be geared up for the moors. Oh, that's a point, but then they don't need it there. <laughs> Alright, let's, then let's go to our second email, which is from Blackjack. Hoping one of you guys knows the answer to this. Is there a way to see what war steed appearances you have gotten before your character has access to the war steed? I've been getting War Steed appearances from festivals on the new alt, but Shift M doesn't work unless you have gotten access to the War Steed. Thanks, Derek Blackjack. And I don't know of any way of doing this either. I just say it probably looks close to whatever mount came out at the same time. Yeah, I would suggest just looking at uh, sometimes Lotro Wiki or some of the Warsteed type of uh, fan sites actually do have those cosmetics out there, pictures of them for you to see. Right, but he asks um, what appearances you have gotten before your character has access. So I don't know if he's necessarily wondering what the cosmetics look like, but maybe wondering what his character has. Well, yeah, you'd have to read ah, the Ah, yes. <laughs> Right, because you won't know because you've probably done like what I do, left-click them immediately to get them out of your inventory, right, yeah. and you can't see them until you hit level round, round 75 or whatever and finally get your war speed. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's currently a way to do that, assuming that's what he's asking, but um, I would definitely like to see that happen, so maybe mention that in the forums and try to get uh, that going, because I'd like to see something like that, because... I when I equip those, especially the ones that you get at like level five or whatever that are already in your inventory, you know, you don't even think about it until you get your war steed, so very well. See something like that. Our third email this is an email heavy week, is Indeed. from Estelle Ali. Hello Lotro players. I am Estelle Ali of Langevel and Brandywine. This week participated in a winter party talent show on Langeville held by the Lonely Mountain Band. I enjoyed it very much. While I enjoy hardcore raiding very much, the role play and events like these are often the highlight of my week. Seeing the popularity of my first poem, Estelle Ali, I decided to continue the story and wrote for you guys and for everyone else the second part of my poem. Hope you guys enjoy it. Looking forward to hear finally read it again with the fire and passion. Love the podcast and site. Keep up the good work. Pressure's Bring on the now. fire and passion, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Full force. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Helm's Deep. Riding fast and riding swift I came. On my war steed, Firefly is his name. Western Rohan, ah, the desolation and cries, the free people divided, full of orcs and spies. The king under a spell, corruption of Grima, 
he wasn't leading. Seeing the, all the death, division and desperation, my heart was bleeding. Then came the light in the shadow, the ray of hope, Gandalf the White, a conqueror of death, the keeper of Vilia, a majestic sight. The king came out of darkness and held up his sword, heir of Errol the Young, the Odin, Rohan's lord. I went through the towns to spread the news, to gather people under one banner, to change their views. We rode to Helm's Deep, prepared its defenses. We cranked the catapults, the, the ballasty built the fences. And then they finally came, the army of Isengard. Our numbers were weak, but we fought hard. We slew thousands, Legolos and Gimli were counting. The orcs flew beyond the Anduril, flame of the west. It was daunting. But the orcs kept coming. They weren't stopping. Driven by the will of Saruman, they weren't stopping. They Then came the dawn, and the white rider came with an army of Erolingus Ar and a white flame. The orcs fled before them with fear and scorns. The shepherds of the forest, the Ents and Horns. The battle for Helm's Deep was a victory, a win. But the battle for Middle Earth is just about to begin. Yay! <laughs> Where can I exchange audio gold? I need to find this out right now because <laughs> this is amazing, finally. <laughs> Yes, you can contact us at lotraplayers.mymiddleearth at gmail.com and you could follow us on Twitter, lotroplayers at lotroplayers, andang at pvmp underscore andang, braxwolf at braxwolf, draculetta at draculetta underscore 72, etheros at etheros, mystery at mystery x o x and you can follow pine leaf <laughs> at human soundboard of middle earth on twitter <laughs> so be sure to follow him there we again cannot promise if this is the official twitter feed of pine leaf but uh, you know try it out it might be good <laughs> who knows it seems like every week i have an unofficial <laughs> twitter account <laughs> <laughs> so who needs an official one, right, Pine yes. Leaf? <laughs> right, because mine seems to change every single week. We got you covered. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so Players News goes live every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. server time, which is United States Eastern Time. You can join us here at lotroplayers.com slash live, and be sure to join us in the chat. And that is all for tonight, so until next time, this is Pine Leaf Needles, and remember to skirmish responsibly. Yeah, fun.